This is Amy Poehler. My new movie, Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2, is coming to theaters June 14th, and it's making me feel joy Woo! and sadness oh. and anger. Ah. Definitely some disgust. Rose! And I think a little fear. Ah. But I'm also feeling these new emotions like anxiety, embarrassment, envy, and ennui. Ah. It's what you call the boredom. Okay, that one was weird. It's going to be the feel-everything movie of the summer. Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. Only in theaters June 14. Get tickets now. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Hey all you heroes, hawks, heralds, crows, pirates, and wardens. Welcome to the Dragon Age Lorecast, where we unpack, discuss, and galaxy brain about all the lore behind the Dragon Age series. We are so excited to bring you this podcast. Every episode, we'll be talking about a different topic in the Dragon Age universe. From character deep dives to exalted marches and elven gods, we will cover it all. There will be spoilers. And always remember, swooping is bad. Hello and welcome to the Dragon Age Lorecast, where we talk about Dragon Age and its lore. I am one of your hosts, Austin, also known as Teacup. And I'm your other host, Shelby or Sheikup. And we are here with our patrons this week, and we are so excited about that. So I'm going to let the patrons introduce themselves. And so the first we have here is the Wesbotron. For sure. Hello. Um... We also have LVCC13. Hello. We also have here with us the Capricorn Tower. Yep. Hello. And then last but not least, we have Jay Ambrosian. Hello. We're glad that you all are here. Shelby, why don't you share with us what we're going to talk about? So um, the poll that we voted on this week or this month was... Who is your favorite non-companion NPC and why? So, like, any character, why? Um, just no one that can be, like, in your party, no advisor, nothing like that. Um, a couple notes. I personally will allow, like, people that can come to your camp and, like, live at your camp but are not, you know, able to join your party, like Bodan, that is totally kosher yes he's allowed um and then also i know normally after the mid break we talk about who's your least favorite or the opposite of whatever the topic is we can do that if we have time but i also want to talk about some of the recent dread wolf rumors news news that we've gotten um so we may have time for both because there's not much news that has come out so Stay tuned. We'll just play it by ear. All righty. Well, I think we're then ready to get started. Yeah. Who wants to go first? Austin, why don't you go first? All right. So my for my favorite non-NPC character is obviously, I have said this, this was an answer to a um, giveaway question, actually, which is Tom Wise from Dragon Age 2. I just really like his name. 
every time every time I play the game and either Mailhawk or Femhawk just goes, Tom Wise, we're good to see you. It just makes me happy and brings me joy. But there are so many other people that you could pick. Why would you pick him? Why are you, you know? judging? Why are you judging? <laughs> because you make, I don't know he doesn't do anything. <laughs> you make me go first and then you judge my decision. What the heck? I, I am not apologizing. <laughs> you should. <laughs> do you have any other reasons other than just that you like his name? Um, No. Bruh. That is it. That is it. I like his name. Um, he's just like one of those merchants. I don't even remember what he crafts, but he's one of the crafting merchants. Um, but he's just my favorite. I like him. Poison. He makes poison. Poison, yes. Which I never use. So, but again, just like the dude. He's cool. I mean, okay, if you say so. I'm judging. Why I'm sorry, are you judging? Austin. Jeez. I don't know. I just think um I just think that there are, are characters out there you could have chosen that are a bit more impactful to the story, but I will drop it for now. All right. All right. All right. I hope Tom Wise is so impactful in Dragon Age Dreadwolf and you have to eat your words. I mean, that's fine. I I will do that if I have to, but I don't I don't think I will. I think my answer will also disappoint you then. I've I've got a few. I would have said Tamlin, but I know everybody loves him. But I'm not going to count him as a non-playable NPC because you can play him for five seconds. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so I have two. I know nobody's going to pick either of them, and they tie together. But the uh, the Grand Oak from Dragon Age Origins, because he's so goofy. And then <laughs> the Crazy Hermit from Dragon Age Origins. I love their beef. Um, they're both really funny, and they were the cause of so much... Um, let me see. It wasn't necessarily... I guess it was frustration because I'm like 10, 11 years old trying to play Dragon Age Origins and I can't figure out how to get out of the forest because I need the acorn. And I just kept getting lost and I kept talking to the tree and talking to the hermit and they made me mad. And now as an adult, I, I love them. They're funny. They're goofy guys. Um, so they'd have to be some of my favorite uh, NPCs. So there's a few others, but I'll save them for if we have time. Sure. I mean, I think that's fair because they at least like play a role in a quest and like the Grand Oak, I think, is the one that rhymes everything. Right. Like yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he's <laughs> always rhyming everything. Like, he's I think that's poetry. Hilarious. Yes. And he's yes, got he's poetry. got a sassy pose when he's done talking to you. He just snaps into that pose and it's it's beautiful. He is a glorious poetry. I'm replaying um, Dragon Age Origins right now, so and I don't remember the pose, so I'll have to go in and look for that whenever I get to that point. Oh my god, take Ogren with you when you go, because his reaction's just funny. I um I don't I don't know. Maybe I'll do things differently this time around, but usually I save um I save Orzammar for the very last main quest that I do. But I am playing a Dwarven Noble this time for the first time ever. So maybe I'll do that first. I don't know. I feel like that might be really hard. We'll see. I always do Circle, then Orzammar, get the two biggest pains in the Tukas out <laughs> of the way. Then I can enjoy the rest of the game and have yeah, all my that's companions. That's fair. That's can fair. confirm. Yeah, I usually... Doing, doing Orzammar... Uh... Uh, the dwarf quest first uh, is the hardest, but then everything else is easy. <laughs> True. I guess that's probably fair. Maybe I'll do that first just for the challenge. I mean, I'm a lot better at playing video games now than the last time I played Origins, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, 
So I do have a message to read from Crimson Knight, who um, incidentally, his favorite was also mine. So um, he says, my favorite non-companion NPC is Sir Barris. He is always trying to do the right thing, and his promotion to Knight Commander is such a cool scene. The only downside is that he's not in the game enough, and I hope that he returns in Dreadwolf. I also would love to see him return in Dreadwolf. However, he can die in Inquisition, so... We'll see. We'll see what happens there. I love him. Like that has stopped them from bringing people back before. I mean, true. Very true. I mean, there is a lot of lyrium at the castle <laughs> where you recruit him. So the go- the lyrium ghost shenanigans could continue. Also true. Every time, Very true. Every time I hear the word lyrium ghost, I am filled with rage. <laughs> Why? I want to hear your. Reading. I don't know. It is just it, such. He's scared. He gets it's scared. lazy writing, and it makes yeah. me mad. I just need them to, like, I guess explain what that means, because I want to know why they chose to do that when they could have just done another coal situation where a spirit just presses through the fade and is like, "I love Leliana so much. I'm gonna be her." Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great question. I and you can't really use the excuse. Oh, well, like we didn't have that idea when we wrote the Liliana stuff because Asunder is right there. So, yeah, I don't know. It anyway, makes sense. It wouldn't be Dragon Age lore. That's that's very fair. That's real. The realness. But I guess to jump from there. I get, yeah, I would have to go with Wade and Heron from Origins. I just think they're really funny. And like the entire time I played, I was like, are they together? And then it was later like confirmed by David Gator. And I was like, okay, I was, I was reading that correctly. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but they're also just like, I don't know, they're, they're like simultaneously like representation, but they're also just, that sniping heterosexual couple, but two men instead. And I just find that funny. Um, and I was so happy that they got to come back for Awakening and be your personal uh, blacksmiths or whatever there. So um, definitely my favorites from the uh, Origins games. I was about to say, I love that they're a war table mission also after you defeat a dragon for the first time, defeat a high dragon. You can send the scales to Wade. So that's a little oh, Easter egg there. My God, I didn't even know that that like I've always like done that, but I've never read the full description. So now I'm gonna have to read it next time. Yeah, it's them. It's so cute because they're bantering a little in the letter still, too, I think. <laughs> That's cute. It's called Celebrating the Dragon Slaying. So Mm -hmm. in case anybody wants to look that up. So every good game needs a good villain. And that's why I'm picking my character for my favorite game. I already know what you're thinking. That's why I'm picking my favorite NPC from Dragon Age 2. She's smart. She's cunning. She's really strong. It's Flemeth. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, I got you all. <laughs> ah. I definitely thought I, I definitely thought you were gonna say Meredith. I want the record to show that at first I was like, oh, he's gonna say Meredith. And then I thought, nah, Wes is too happy. He thinks he's gonna get us, so he's gonna say someone else. You guys all thought that the resident Templar would choose their leader. Well, you'd almost be right. Anyways, uh, I don't know. Uh, after playing through the games on Insanity Difficulty or Nightmare, whichever the hardest difficulty is called, Flemeth is one of, if not the hardest fight out of all of the games. Uh, on top of just her lore from her past, uh, has probably one of the biggest reveals in Inquisition. Uh, which kind of is pretty insane, wouldn't lie. It kind of threw me for a loop. Uh, uh, just everything about her character is interesting. I like it, and I like to redesign. 
I definitely agree. Her reveal in Inquisition is probably the single most important thing that happens in the entire game, in my opinion. And it's the reason why I'm making my friend play through the other games, because it doesn't feel as impactful unless you've played Origins in Dragon Age 2. Also, like, I just love that that reveal happens and then, like... And we get the reveal in Trespasser, and so everything is just like, oh yeah, like this totally makes sense. Like we got Flemeth as Mythal. Okay, so let's you can be Ben Harrell. I think that my second favorite, because Cerberus would be my number one, uh, but my second would probably be Brother Genitivi, just because number one, he's such an icon with his writing. Um, you know, he is the like most prolific, most most read author in Thetis until Varric takes over when he releases Hard in High Town. So number one, he's got my respect there. But number two, I just think he's a little fun guy. And also in Tventer Nights, you know, Jenna TV has a whole chapter with all of the other like bards and writers of Thetis. And it's a really fun chapter. Um, it's one of the ones that you're like, I'm not really sure what happened at the end of this, but it's fun and good for him to like make another appearance. So I hope we get more Jenna TV content and Dreadwolf, even if it is just codex entries. Um, but yeah, I love him. I think he's fun. Oh, if we're doing second favorites, uh, mm -hmm. my second favorite is probably, it was almost my favorite, but then I remembered that, uh, Flemeth exists. Uh, the man who single-handedly climbed a mountain with a goat on his back and just to huck it at your fortress. Ah! Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd go to the bar with him. Yes. I mean, he could probably drink all of us under the table. I think his name is Mavren the something. What is it? I don't remember the second part of his name. I'm looking it up. Mavren the Under. He is the chieftain of an Avar tribe. All right. Anybody else want to add any more? I think everybody's gone. Me. No, Lizzie, you haven't. I haven't yeah, yet. Good. I've just Sorry. been sassing everybody. <laughs> That's my job. I'm sassy. Um, I think my favorite, and this might be a bit of a hot take, but it entertains me. Uh, I like Bran from Dragon Age 2, the Seneschal. Seneschal Bran. I think he is just so done with everything. So when you're playing as Purple Hawk and then imagining just Varric in general as Viscount and having to deal with him, it's just, mm. it, it makes me giggle. He's a poor, miserable man, and I am entertained by his existence. Because you know Hawk puts him through it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I mean, I mean imagine when Varric becomes Viscount. Like, I can't. I can't imagine. But doesn't he also show up in Trespasser too? He does because he's there with Varric and he gets mad when Varric yeah. gives you the key for the giant chains That's in right. the harbor. <laughs> and he's just like, That's no, right. you can't give them that. Yeah, when, okay, so I was looking at his uh, page on the wiki. It says, when Varric invites the Inquisitor to a game of Wicked Grace, Bran tells Varric not to bet any public buildings this time. He's so done. Because it's it's every freaking game. You know it. <laughs> and then poor Aveline has to go get everything back. Um, cool. Anybody else have any others they want to share? Um, just another one that also came to mind was Calpurnia. Uh, mm. Just because I find her motivations fascinating. I just, I want to, I want more Calpurnia content because I want to know what her thought process was to be like, yeah, I'm going to be the leader of the Venatory, even though I'm against slavery. But I also want to revive Tevinter to its glory days, but also I'm against slavery. I'm just like, what's the calculus here, girl? Like, Speaking as a yeah, middle she child, doesn't... that sounds like middle child logic to me, in which there is none. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've read her short story, but I think it gives a little bit of context. It clearly doesn't answer all of the questions, um, but I, I enjoyed her short story probably more than most of the others. I'll have to look that up then. Or you can wait until our episode comes out about all the short stories. That is also true. 
Um, I also wanted to add one of my other favorites, and this person is minor, so I felt like I needed to choose another person who had more significance to the plot for my real answer, Austin. (laughs) Um, But no, this person that I really think is hilarious is Trifles Minutia. He is the um, trivia guy, um, the quizquisition guy that walks around Skyhold. Um, so I, I love him. He's funny to me. Nobody suspects the quiz position. I guess I've got a few. Um, yeah, sure. (laughs) Um, I'm not going to elaborate on this because I feel like if you don't like Sandal, you're suspicious. Everybody loves Sandal. Everyone loves enchantment. Um, Krem, huge one, because I mean, Krem's pretty important to the story. You get a lot of really wholesome dialogue interaction between the chargers between krem between bull um i will never sacrifice the chargers i'm sorry bioware you can't make me do it um we don't uh, talk about yeah. other options it does there is no other option that's the only option is to save them um but i also really like volta from the descent dlc Which might be a hot take. I don't know what about that DLC, like, caught my attention so much. I love the Deep Roads for some odd reason. I don't know if I'm just, like, a little rat in tunnels. Um, But I really enjoyed that DLC. I love the playthrough. I like the lighting and the scenery. And I want to know more about Valta. Where did she go? So hopefully, I'm not getting my hopes up, but hopefully we'll find out what happened and maybe hear from her again, because I'm sure she's got all sorts of knowledge with whatever she's got going on. I also really like, um, I don't particularly care for Volta, but I really like Lieutenant Wren, who is kind of her um, companion in that DLC. I think um, I just really like him a lot, but I also tend to like people who are cranky and grumpy. So that's probably a me thing. You know, speaking of the DLCs, I also really like the chieftain of the Avar tribe that we run into in the, uh, I can't even remember the Mm. name now. My brain just died. I'm sorry. Thought train of thought has derailed. (laughs) Uh, But Savara Sunhair, I love her or fun hair, whatever her name is. She's really fun. I loved her. Yes, I forgot about her completely. I also like judging the bear. <laughs> I love the bear. The bear comes back to Skyhold with me, and I'm like, Cullen, this is our new child. Mood. Oh, Storbacker. That's the bear's name. Storbacker. Excellent opportunity to just rain bear puns on everyone. Um, most people will not understand this reference, but... Um, in our D and D campaign that Austin and I play in, he had a character who did not believe in bears, <laughs> did not believe in the existence of bears. Jeff slash Tim, he got a name change halfway through. All right, well, um, I think that now will be a good time to go to the mid break, Austin. Yeah, let's go on to it. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga, Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. What is this? A new book? All this shit is weird. Oh, Verk, that is a terrible title. What are you even thinking? That book you were reading this morning, Asarian Spear. I don't think he had a spear in the legends. He does in this one. Read the description. Andraste knelt before no man but her maker. But she hadn't counted on the Archon Hesarian. Can Hesarian penetrate the tight-knit defenses of the warrior prophetess? 
Will she be prepared to face the full blast of his power? Wait a minute. Isabella, this is a vulgar thing. You want to borrow it? No! You sure? It has pictures. Not listening, I'm not listening. Varric, does Hawk ever autograph books? Why? Doesn't your copy of The Tale of the Champion have a big hole in it? Yes, but it could also have Hawk's signature on it. All right. Welcome to the middle of the show where we take time to thank our patrons. Thank you to all of our patrons, especially our first patrons, Genesis and Lisa M. Uh, thank you to all of you all who support us there. We greatly appreciate all the support that you can give. Um, if you'd like to support us and come on these shows, you can go to patreon.com slash DA Lorecast and sign up for our first Enchanter tier and join us once, once a month for these shows. Another great way to support us is to leave us ratings and reviews on Apple or Spotify. We have no reviews to read today. So if you have something to say, kind to say, and you want us to read it out, get out there and review us or comment on Spotify. Um, and then the last thing that I have before we talk about some dread wolf. I don't know if news is the right word or conversations. That's what I'm going with. Dread wolf conversations. There will be a few weeks over the summer due to vacation that we will not have episodes out one of those weeks is next week we will not have an episode release so just letting you know there there will be a few weeks there so if you've missed an episode like if it's been a couple weeks don't freak out it's just because we're on a little bit of vacation The past years have been so busy. We have earned at least a few moments of rest. A calm night out sounds... Oh, bravo! Bravo! Was the woman in gold playing a king? Who was the man in feathers? Oh, it's all very simple. The first actor's mask is determined by... Uh, well, I will lend you the program guide. But tell me, did you enjoy the performance? That was... one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Truly. That part with the glittery... and they actually set fire to... <laughs> yes, I truly enjoyed it. Then I call tonight a great success. I've got some of it written down now. Give it here. <laughs> Her breast strained against the leather jerkin like two wild stallions corralled against their will. <laughs> she pounced the smooth moves of a jungle cat and locked her thighs around Donick's waist. He... What? Nothing. What is that? Isabella just thought she'd celebrate your love affair with a written dedication. It's friend fiction. I do it out of love. I will never, ever be clean again. Oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you. Yes, swooping is bad. All right, let's get into this Dreadwolf information. So... It's, I mean, news is kind of a misnomer, I should say, because really and truthfully, it's just rumors at this point, um, except for one thing, which is the EA fiscal year, like, um, stockholder shareholder report that they released recently. They, in their reporting, suggested that they had a game that was going to be coming out in this fiscal year. Um, actually, I think they said two. And so people are taking that to mean Dreadwolf, which I think is a very real possibility. But EA did not say that Dreadwolf is, is coming out this year. We're just kind of inferring that. Um, so that's the only like concrete evidence we have. But Jeff Grubb, who is a games journalist, has said that they're likely shooting for the fall of this year, which I have long said on the podcast. Um, and then last 
the last little thing that we received is um, an article came out. I can't remember where it originated from. Maybe it originated with Jeff Grubb himself. I'm not sure exactly the origin of it, Um, but basically it was just kind of news coming out from the developers at BioWare that says basically Dreadwolf has everyone at BioWare really happy with how it's turned out. So the things of note is A, obviously the BioWare developers are happy about how the game has turned out, but also the the turn of phrase that's being used there, that the game they're happy with how the game has turned out. That is a past tense, T-U-R-N-E-D. To me, that suggests the game is done, like done done. Um, which I think is significant. I think this is the first piece of information we've had about the game that suggests it is real, it is done, it is ready to go. So I think that's significant. Another thing to bring up is um, I think EA is has done a kind of like six month marketing cycle. Um, and so if we're, we're thinking about end of year, close to the holidays, and now that is about six months because Bioware did say they would give us more news this summer. So we are still waiting, but it seems that there are things coming down the pipeline. I want to kind of open the floor for any discussion that you all have. Don't feel like you have to be super positive. Um, yeah, whatever y'all want to want to say about it. Well, all I can say at the moment is if you're right, praise the maker, because even if the game ends up being terrible, I'm just tired of waiting. I want to know how I'm going to feel about this. I mean, maker's balls. I just want the game. I'll I'll believe it when I see it. I think that's fair. Um, Both of you. Uh, I am very skeptical, but also reserving a modicum of optimism, like the tiniest amount. Um, But otherwise, generally. I have my concerns. But I've been saying this for months, but I'm waiting just for the next reveal to be another video of them going slowly over still images with a bear doing a voiceover. Yeah. It's either going to be that still or images. it's going to be epic and our minds will be blown. It will. There will be no yeah. in-between. Yeah, it's like, um, but everything has to be focused on Solus. Like, we will get no other information. Hopefully, though, seriously, I am hoping that we do get more concrete information. I think, I, I mean, there's no way at this point that they haven't seen the memes, right? Like, they have to have seen the memes, right? Like, there's no way that they they haven't seen people talking shit about them all over the internet and like no hate to the devs obviously as always we stand the devs but like they they know that people have pretty much nothing positive to say about this game as of yet and they have a lot of pressure too i mean i know mm-hmm. people are probably tired of the Baldur's gate comparisons but you have a studio which comparatively is so quite a bit smaller you know, they haven't been putting out games as long as a studio like Bioware, as long as EA. And then they drop a game that wins Game of the Year, has millions of people playing it, like, has great stories, which, yes, there's issues with Baldur's Gate, there's plot holes and all that. But it was done well. And this is a game that we've been waiting for for a decade. Um, it has a very loyal fan base. You know, it's got people who like me who've been playing it since we were kids. Now we're adults. We're very invested in the series, so they have a lot of pressure to put out a good game. Because if it tanks, they're done. There's really <laughs> there's no coming back from that. I don't even think Mass Effect could save them at that point. Mm-hmm. Oh my yeah, god! I, I just realized I have spent my entire twenties waiting for this freaking game. I'm thirty now, and I spent a decade waiting for this. I'm having an existential crisis. Please excuse me. I'm going to go and just like die now. Excuse me, <laughs> listeners. Yeah. She is not actually dying. <laughs> I am definitely. I guess I don't know how to feel about it because, on the one hand, I think Bioware is. The Bioware that we know is kind of dead, um, especially after the layoffs earlier this year of some of the longest running writers for the series of Dragon Age specifically. But like, part of me still just doesn't want it to be bad because I feel like 
who like because I want Dragon Age to keep going. I want it to answer the questions. I want it to expand the world even. Like maybe we get to a point where we're no longer in Thetis and we're expanding beyond just that continent and stuff like that. Cause I'm I love the lore of the series and all of that. So I'm worried that if it does bad and Bioware just like goes down the toilet, that's it. We're not gonna get any answers um so Mm -hmm. but they they would they have them and ea have kind of put themselves in a very difficult situation between anthem and andromeda so it's it's tough um i guess i'm still foolishly optimistic though i i don't want to like be too hyped until i get like a physical release date i still i still think it's gonna hopefully blow my mind I think that's part of what's been so frustrating is that when Inquisition was coming out, they gave us so much information. Like, I remember my best friend emailing me or messaging me like, oh, my gosh, did you see the video about the companions and the romance options and all this stuff for Inquisition? And I was like, we were inundated, S-A-T word, with info about the game before we got it. And now we're starving actually starving for information here and it's very frustrating i think uh one of the things that they're not doing that because i remember one of the big inquisition trailers that they showed was a gameplay trailer with you riding through i think the the hissing the hissing waste or the western approach and you were riding the horse and the horse looked and we were like oh my gosh we're gonna get horses in this game it's going to be open world it's going to be awesome and then a dragon flies over and like oh my gosh we're going to fight these dragons they look awesome and then dragon fights were obviously awesome like inquisition has the best dragon fights but horseback riding was yeah yeah there were definitely a few things in the inquisition trailers that never made it into the main game i remember them talking about this scenario where like if you don't get to like a village on time it'll be on fire and it had this whole scene of varic being really sad about dead people and i'm like that's not in inquisition which isn't to say that inquisition is bad i love that game but there is definitely a risk to being too open where you end up selling people on cut content I wonder if that was supposed to be Crestwood because of all the raining and stuff that was happening in there. Because that would make sense. I for the I gaslit myself into thinking that Crestwood was the location in Dragon Age Origins for like five years, and then I went back and replayed Origins. Like, no, it's not. Like, okay. Yeah, we're avoiding populated areas where people might want to like turn us into low gain in that game. So yeah, until we go to the cities. <laughs> Okay, we can't go to Crestwood, but we can go to Denerim. Everyone looks sus But to in be Denerim. fair, you have to go to Denerim. Like, there's stuff you have to do. So I, I kind of get that. But Redcliffe? I don't know. Anyway, that's kind of off topic. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, I remain, like I said, I have a modicum of hope for the game. But also some very real concerns. However, I am still keeping an open mind at this point because truly we've gotten nothing like we have we have received no information Um, when they start giving us more information because they will. I don't think they're just going to like drop the game like a Beyonce album. Like I I don't think it's going to come from a surprise. Then we can start having conversations about like, okay, here are some more red flags or here are some green flags. Maybe my concerns have lessened a bit. Who knows? But I am hopeful um, that we'll get some more books and, you know, other content that's like leading up to the games. I know we got the missing all throughout last year and then obviously the TV show um, and then a few years before that to Winter Nights and Last Flight. But I'm not sure how much those are going to tie into Dreadwolf, if at all, other than the end of Last Flight, which I won't give spoilers until the episode. But, you know, who knows? Um that's pretty much all I have to say about it as of yet, unless anybody else has any final thoughts. No? All right. Well, I'm going to turn it back over to Austin and we can wrap it up. All right. Well, we'll just let you all 
let people know where they can find you, anything you got going on, whatever you want to do. And we're going to start backwards. So I'm going to start with uh, Jay Ambrosian. Uh, I guess right now you can just find me on Discord. Um, my name's Ambrosian on there, or at least should be. Um, I, I hang out in the server all the time. So, yeah. All right. And then Capricorn Tower. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm Nick or Capricorn Tower. I hang out on the Discord. Um, if we get that release date, I'm going to single-handedly revive Heroes, Hawks, and Heralds um, in preparation of the drop. All right, LVCC13. I am LVCC13, or Lizzie, and you can find me on Discord occasionally because I work with tiny humans. My schedule is crazy. And you can also find me in the Avengers audio drama where I voice the Wasp. All right. And then Wesbotron. We may have lost him. I think he might have fallen asleep. <laughs> He's you in can the find pit of despair. Yeah. You can find the Wesbotron on Discord at WeCup. Mm. He is not endorsed by us. Just putting no. that out there. No, he is um, not. Well, I think if that's all, thank you all for being here. Uh, it was great chatting with you. Um, and thank you all for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. You can find us on Twitter at DA Lorecast. If you have any lore questions, topics to unpack, or side character suggestions, join our Cups Podcasting and More Discord server. It's easily the best place on the internet. You can also support us financially through our Patreon. You can find us there on patreon.com slash Dragon Age Lorecast. The Dragon Age Lorecast is part of the Robots Radio Network. For more information about the Robots Radio Network, join the Discord server via the link in our episode description. If you enjoyed the show or learned something new today, please subscribe, leave us a review, and join the Patreon. And if you enjoyed our intro and outro music, give a big thank you to Pipe Man Studios. Thank you, Pipe Man. Thanks again for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Aaron. And I'm Ariel. And we're the hosts of the Legend of Zelda Lorecast, a podcast about all things Legend of Zelda, from Errol to Zora, and all the fun things in between. If you're ready to dive deep and learn more about the Legend of Zelda lore and everything surrounding it, come join us on Legend of Zelda Lorecast. You can find us on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, or wherever else you get your podcasts. We hope to see you soon.